Hey, Jewel. How you doing? You're the first one here. Let me turn on my phone lines. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm getting my phone line up. Let's see. I need to start trying to remember these codes by heart. Okay, let me put up the phone number. I'm good. We had a snow day today. So I've been home. Normally I would have been at church, but I've been home because we got, I don't know how much snow we got. They said last night, what well, they've been saying, you know, we were getting three to six inches. So I haven't checked. <laughs> I sent my son outside to uh, shovel the snow about an hour ago. So, he said it was a lot of snow out there. So, yeah, we didn't go to church this morning. So, I just been home chilling and I've been cruising these YouTube streets. And waiting on more information, you know, regarding Jussie. Because what we heard yesterday was just... I just can't believe it. Okay, I'm almost done putting the uh, access code. Actually, I don't know if you guys need an access code or not. 753359. Yeah, I guess you do. Okay, that's the phone number. Okay, I just put the phone number in there, so it's right on the screen, so you should be able to see it. So, if anybody wants to call in, they are free to call in and discuss these topics we'll be discussing today. Um, let's see, zero. Mute this music. I hate that elevator music. Uh on these uh conference calls the elevator music drives you crazy but um yeah it's it's a sad story i mean all the way around again all the way around because a lot of people still don't understand like what what's the end game for all of this like when they um access code seven five three three five let me turn that down when they had announced that he, uh, the police were seeking to speak with him and they wanted to speak with him immediately and he needs to come down to the precinct or he needs to, you know, uh, come down to see them. I'm like, okay, is he about to get arrested? Because that's the first thing that crossed my mind. Like, this man is about to get arrested because a lot of people have been saying that he, he made this whole story up and he got all these people involved like the authorities, um, you know, the FBI, and, you know, wasted a lot of tax dollar money. So I just automatically assume, like, he's going to get arrested, and I don't know. I don't know. And then to hear that uh, the guys, the Nigerian men who uh, he at first claimed were two white people, who had attacked him, jumped him, tried to noose, put a noose around his neck um, to come to find out they weren't even white. They were Nigerian. And then to come to find out that <laughs> they played a part in setting this whole thing up. I mean, this is unbelievable. This is unbelievable. I... I, I I'm, I'm confused. A lot of people are so confused, including the LGBT community, Q community. And a lot of people are so confused. You said people do anything for money and fame. Very, very true. Very true. But it's like now people are saying that 
the network, you know, Fox and them or the uh, Lee Daniels, a lot of people is a, allegedly a, allegedly claiming that he even has something to do with it now. And I don't know whether to believe that or not. I mean, Lee Daniels? I mean, is it that the ratings have gone down on the show? I mean, I still watch the show, and I know a lot of other people who still watch the show. So I'm like, what's the end game? Are they trying to, you know, up the ratings by doing this? But regardless of the end game, Jesse did not think this all the way through. He did not think this all the way through. Um, He could land up in jail. And it's like, was it worth it? I mean, really, was it worth it? <laughs> it's, it's not. I mean, you was famous. You you um, been on this show for a very long time. You done made a lot of money off this show. Um, I think he was about to actually have his own album come out outside of the show. Um, and that's another thing. I always wonder why he hasn't put out uh, music before because he can really sing, you know? He can really sing, and I can picture him, you know, being an actual singer um, and on tours and opening up for people and stuff like that because he's very, very talented, but it's obvious he did not think this through at all. He, he really didn't, and so I was been trying to look to see if I could find some update on, you know, the police... Um, if he actually came in, uh, they talking about he rehearsed the whole attack, like rehearsed the whole attack. And I think most of us knew, most of us already was questioning the whole thing. I mean, he could have came up with a better storyline. Maybe then we would have believed him <laughs> if he came up with a better storyline besides he went out in the middle of the night for a Subway sandwich, you know, but it, it's been like two weeks, you know, since the attack, um, in Chicago and these entire two weeks, people, especially the, uh, citizens of Chicago has been doubting him from day one. So the reason we moved uh, from our existing like, building was we wanted to downsize. We as, don't understand and, what the end game is. Why would you rehearse something like this? Like, enough hate crime doesn't go on in our world that we have to deal with every day. And for you to create a fake hate crime for attention, like what type of attention do y'all think he was trying to get? Again, some people are saying Lee Daniels, you know, they alleging that he has something to do with it. Um, they alleging that, you know, um, it might have something to do with him, you know, trying to get more publicity because it's out. he has an album about to come out. But basically, basically the police are, they confirmed they investigated the, you know, the two guys um, that were supposedly attacked him and, you know, yelling out racial and homophobic slurs. Um, they said, you know, he was, it was an unknown chemical that was poured on him, but a lot of people are saying it was bleach. Um, and it was right in the neighborhood where they were filming their show. So... <laughs> But the funniest part about the whole story was when we found out he had kept that noose around his neck for like an hour after he had got home back to the safety of his own home. He still kept the noose around his neck. Um, he took himself to the hospital where, you know, he spoke with uh, a, a friend, you know, a friend of his and him has spoke with, you know, Don Lemon, who works for CNN you know, to confirm that the act, the incident really happened. Everybody offered their support, including, you know, Fox TV. 
they offer their support. The LGBTQ offer their support. A lot of, you know, heterosexuals offer their support. A lot of his fans of the TV show offer their support. And then to find out that this whole thing was a hoax, a lot of people is upset. Like, really, really upset. Even though we had doubts of the story the whole time and we knew there were holes in the story the whole time it's like everybody had expressed so much love for him and so much sadness and so much anger about the whole situation you know it's it's just messed up all all the way around and now you know they have said the Chicago police, you know, have said that, well, they actually told CNN that authorities have video of him, you know, entering the Lowe's Chicago after the alleged attack with what appeared to be a noose around his neck. And according to, you know, the Chicago police, he had told the detectives that during his walk back from Subway, he was attacked by the two men near the lower entrance of the Lowe's. And that's when they were supposedly had started yelling out all these explicit, you know, homophobic slurs, racial slurs, and things like that. And then to find out that the two guys, the two Nigerians, had actually went and purchased the <laughs> purchased the rope for the news. I'm like, did he put the noose around his own neck? Did he have them put the noose around his neck? And, I mean, did he actually stage it or did... Because there's no videotape of the actual incident. So I'm wondering, did he put the noose around his own neck? Because if there was no cameras around or no way to prove that it actually happened, did he actually have the Nigerians, you know do the whole act with him, or did he just have him by the rope and he put it on his own neck? It, it's still a lot of questions. Um, it's still a lot of answers needed, you know, regarding this situation. And then that brings us to the letter that he alleges that he received the threats and things like that. And how they said it, the, the writing was very bad. You know, it looks like some children... You know, or somebody wrote it in Chicken Scratch, you know, the threat saying, Jesse must die, or Jesse, you're going to die. Was that all a hoax, too? Like, was the letters fake? Or were the letters real? And maybe he didn't think nobody believed that the letters were real, and so that's why he went away went with the hoax, to make it seem more believable that he had received death threats? It's so much. It's it's so much. It's like it's so much. And then on the show with Robin Roberts. When he was on the show with Robin Roberts, I watched it because I work from home during the daytime. Um, through the week. And so I I genuinely I usually routinely watch the daytime talk shows, the daytime morning shows. Uh, from GMA to, um, what's that other show? The other show with, uh, Whoopi and them, The View. Um, so I gen- I routinely watch those shows. And I watched the GMA interview that Robert, you know, did with, uh, Robin Roberts did with him. And just like a lot of people, it just seemed like, it just seemed like it, 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 he was making it all up. Like... He didn't seem sincere, even when he started shedding a few tears, talking about he can't believe that, you know, people are questioning his truth, talking about we don't want to, we don't want to face the truth, or we don't want to know the truth or see the truth. What is the truth, Jesse? What is the truth? That's what we want to know. What is the truth? We know right now that it was a hoax, but what is his end game? That's what that's what uh, I want to know. That's that's all I want to know is what is the end game. And for the police to be 
put trying to put out an AP, basically putting out an APB for him. <laughs> Somebody bring Jussie down. We need to talk to Jussie. I'm afraid this man might face, you know, some serious time in jail. Uh, I'm afraid he is going to face some serious time in jail. So y'all let me know what y'all um, think about that and what do you think his end game was? Do you think possibly the TV network, like they're alleging, you know, Lee Daniels, you know, Fox, like they had something to do with it? To possibly maybe motivate their viewers and increase their ratings. Um, I do know that for the first few seasons, Empire was duh-ish. Everybody was watching it. But then around a the time when uh, when uh, Lucius had got hurt and had lost his leg... And, you know, around, remember around that time, if you're, you know, a fan of the show, you probably remember around that time. And then kind of like the ratings started to come back, to go down when he had lost his memory and all that jazz. They did say the ratings had kind of went down. But I don't know because I don't keep my eye on ratings on TV shows. I either watch them because I like them or I don't watch them because I don't like them. So I can't really... Um, you know, speak on the ratings per se, if they dipped really negatively, you know, so I really can't say, but that's what some people are alleging that this whole entire hoax was to benefit the show, either that and or, and or his uh, album that is coming out or recently came out or supposed to come out or something like that. And I actually didn't even know he had an album coming out. But, you know, good for him because he is a singer. He is really talented. Like I said before, I always thought that he should go that route to really trying to be a uh, R&B singer or, you know, something like that. An actual artist besides acting. So... But, again, y'all let me know what y'all think about that and what y'all think the outcome, the whole plan outcome was. Um, now, I know for sure that they said the Nigerian men, since they were fully cooperating, you know, the two brothers, since they were fully cooperating, um, they aren't going to face any charges. I'm pretty sure that's what I read, that they are not going to face any charges um, because they were fully cooperating and telling, you know, the police and the investigators, you know, all this detailed information about the planned hoax. So, I, I, I don't know why I can't believe that they won't be receiving any kind of charges because they all were involved, but maybe the police, they just want the big fish. You know, they just want the big fish. They want to fry the big fish. They want to send a message out to people who are, you know, doing things like this, you know, making hopes, making people believe that something really happened to them because it could backfire. Like a lot of people said, it could backfire. It could one day really, really happen to somebody. And people are going to be like, is they for real? Did this really happen? Is you taking this from Jussie? Is this a Jussie catfish? I mean... <laughs> You know, like, is, I mean, did I say catfish? I meant copycat. <laughs> is this a Jesse copycat? You know, and that's what a lot of people are afraid of because already his story didn't add up. And then a lot of people weren't believing him already. Then he comes on GMA. Like, he came on GMA. Good morning, America. You know, he spoke with Robin Roberts on Good Morning America. And I think a lot of people at that time was... Okay, the story still, you know, sounds a little shady, but he then came on GMA. So why would he come on GMA and sit there in front of Robin Roberts and lie? And lie. And he's crying and y'all don't want to know the truth. It happened and why would I lie? You know, I was scared for my life and... 
he's describing how he punched them. They punch him. They, you know, put the noose around his neck. And I don't know. I don't know. This this is just this is a whole this is just a whole bunch of hot ass mess. <laughs> it's a whole bunch of hot ass mess. But again, y'all let me know what y'all thought about that, what y'all think about that situation. Um as far as the LBGTQ community, I have seen some blogs and some heard some words from that community and they are they 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 are upset, like a lot of us, regarding, you know, if this is a total hoax lie. You know, they're upset, but then they're also concerned. Like, who would do something like that? I mean, who, this is serious accusation. Not that you just got beat up, or not that somebody just called you some homophobic slurs, but a noose actually been put around your neck? In Chicago, I mean, imagine the, imagine the outrage and the fear of the citizens in Chicago, especially the gay community, when this first when this story first broke. So, I can imagine how the you know LGBTQ community feels about this, you know. But then on the flip side, some people is like, you know what, he needs help. I hope that he is okay mentally. You know, I hope that he, we don't know what's wrong. We don't know what he's going through because I just can't imagine that Lee Daniels and Fox TV has something to do with this. I think it's, it's, I think it was all him and the Nigerians. I don't know the end game. If y'all think y'all know the end game, let me know, but I'm going to keep my eye open, you know, for the news, for the, you know, the, the blogs and everything to get more updated information regarding this story and to find out if he really, like, if the Nigerians are telling the truth, if they are telling the truth and he allegedly set up this whole thing, why? And why did y'all help him? Like, why did y'all help him? I want to hear all that. I need to know all that. Because this is something serious. I can't imagine my friends coming to me, somebody who's gay, bi, whatever, trans, whatever, you know, part of the LGBTQ, and be like, can you and your brother or you and your sister, we gonna go out at 3 a.m. in the morning. I want y'all to throw some bleach on me or whatever, if that even happened, since the whole thing was a hoax per the Nigerians. So if anything ever got thrown on him um, at 3 a.m. and put a noose around my neck. Oh, yeah, and by the way, go purchase it at Hobby Lobby or Lowe's or Home Depot. You know, purchase it for me. And meet me at the corner of such and such at 3 a.m. Seven, five, three, Who does that? Why would you even volunteer? Why would you even agree to do some crazy mess like that? First of all, it's the coldest night. It's the coldest night in history in Chicago around that time, and you agree to do something like that, I'm going to have my butt in bed underneath my co covers in the comfort of my own warm, heated home drooling on my pillow. What is you talking about, Jess? What? I'm... <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> Oh my, I wonder if he paid them. Like, maybe he paid them. Maybe he gave them some money, enough money to make them go through with this hoax. Five, three, three, five, nine. I don't know, y'all. I don't know. I don't know. But anywho, anyway, back on to my other subject. On to my other subject. A lot of you who are YouTubers and who follow certain people on YouTubers that heard the news that brother Jay Wilson then came out this closet that he was never in. That he was never in. So he says, um, that to me is no news flash. Jesse making a hoax. I mean, planning this whole hoax, saying he was attacked and somebody put a noose around his neck at 3 a.m. while he was shopping for a subway foot long. <laughs> that 
was news flash. This with Brother Jay, this is not a news flash. Um, I've been following him for some time now. And I, along with a lot of other people, was like, okay, and you're, he, he claims he's bi. Um, I don't think uh, a lot of us assumed that, but a lot of people had assumed that he was gay. And it's, it was a lot of signs there. Um, his whole demeanor, the way he talked, the way he acted, I mean, uh... And, and and let me let me say first before I go f a little further, I have no issues with Jay Wilson. Um, he he does great videos. He give great reads. Um, he's very intelligent, and you know he, he's a cool person. He's a cool person overall. Overall, he's a cool person. And so for me to come across his video and and. I could have went live last night, but I was tired. I was tired. And it was cold, cold here, and I just wanted to snuggle up in my bed and get me some sleep last night. Um, but after hearing that, it's like no shock, no shock at all. I don't feel any differently about, you know, the situation. Um, what I do hate about the whole situation is how someone basically... I won't say it was going to blackmail him, but basically going to blast him based off of um, them finding out that he was part of the LGBTQ community. Um, he spoke about it on his live. So, um, basically, what happened from what I gathered is he had planned to hook up with someone, um, and it happened to be somebody... Uh, he said they had a Virginia area code, and he had told them, you know, hey, what's up? You know, let's do this, basically. If you want the, his exact words, you can go watch his video. But, um, basically, you know, let's do this. You know, let's get it on the poppin'. And I guess that person was going to take that information to blast him and probably either, you know, show some receipts or text messages or whatever. I mean, I don't know what they would have got out of that, being that a lot of us already knew. Like, we already knew. I mean, how many heterosexual men are on YouTube talking about the gay community all the time? Or talking about how they love all these gay or bi YouTubers all the time? Or defending them all the time. And that along with the way he talks, his whole demeanor. I mean, you know a gay person when you see a gay person. It's like 2019. It's no longer to the point where you like, oh my gosh, are they gay? Hmm. Hmm. Giving people to say, hmm. I mean, it's quite obvious these days who's gay, who's not gay, who's questionable. But I, he's never been questionable. But what I hate, again, what I hate is that now, he claims that it's, this was bound to come out one day, and, and I knew that. It was bound to come out one day. But it's sad that you have to feel like you are forced to give your private information on who you like to sleep with. That's what I don't like. Like, it should have been him coming out and not coming out the closet per se, because he claims he wasn't in the closet or he claims, you know, how could you be in the closet if you were never in the closet? You know, he done told us that many, many times. But, but, like, okay. I have a cousin, and I won't say her name, but, you know, a lot of people who, like, might live in my city or part of my circle, my family, whatever, knows who I'm referring to. But I can remember almost very, to the very day, when she had came to me and when she came to me she came by herself I was alone I think she had called and asked could she come over and holler at me or something because she was going through a situation um kind of a domestic situation where somebody the police was called and it was a hot hot mess 
And she had came over and sat down and talked to me. You know, I'm her big cousin, and she looked up to me a lot, you know, when she was growing up. And she felt that she could come to me. And she basically told me, just threw it at me. I'm gay. I'm like, okay, and? <laughs> okay, and? We already knew. We've been knowing for years that you gay. Did you tell everybody else? Did you tell your brothers? Did you tell your sisters? Did you tell your mama? Did you tell, you know, did you tell everybody else? Five, um, A lot of people already knew. We already knew that she was gay. Did we treat her any differently? No. Did we make her? Did we push her? Did we beg her to, did we try to set her up for her to, for us to, you know, hear it from the horse's mouth? No, we didn't do anything like that. That's what I hate when it comes to the gay community. Um, that That's what I really, really hate. Like, he should have been given the opportunity to come out and say it when he was ready to say it. Yes, I'm gay. Or not to say it if he didn't want to say it. Ever. I mean, did it make, does it make a big difference now to you? Certain people that's always harassing him, that's who I'm referring to now. Do, does it now make a, is it okay now? Can you move on now? Can you drop the subject now? Can you stop harassing him? Could you stop bullying him? Could you stop dragging him and calling him sus and all this? Like, there's gay people on YouTube. There's a lot of gay YouTubers. I don't hear people calling them sus. I, and, I, and I'm not going to name names because I follow some of them, but I won't name names. But I don't hear them calling them sus or, or other, you know, explicit homophobic names. I don't hear that. But for some reason, they think it's okay to do that to him. And I guess it was maybe just to bully him into coming out. And it, it worked. It finally worked. It finally worked. It finally worked. Um, now, some people is also questioning the fact if a certain huh, female YouTuber on YouTube who have got into it with him a few times, uh, well, maybe more than a few times, might have had something to do with it because of the area code, because of where she lives, because of where the person who try to um, blast him, obviously lives, based on the area code and all that kind of stuff. Three, three, um, nine. I'm not defending her. I All I'm going to say is, if there's no proof that she did it, like, she, she has been accused on doing a lot of things, and a lot of people have brought receipts to a lot of things she has done. But, me, personally, I'm not the kind of person to sit there and be like, Oh, yeah, they probably did it. Yep, yep, they from the VA. Yep, they live in that area code. Yep. No, I'm not. Unless you have receipts on this person, because these are serious things. Again, when it comes to serious stuff like this and people outing people and people bullying people and all that, you really have to have proof that somebody did something. You know, you just, it's too many people running around these YouTube streets just based off of, uh, rumors and allegations and making claims based off of stuff like that and making videos and then they have to come back and retract every doggone word they said in their video because they don't be having receipts so i'm not defending her never ever will i be just sitting there defending her um but i'm just saying just don't run with the fact that oh, okay you know it was this area it was this area code this person lives there you know jay wilson if he finds out i'm sure he'll let us know you know if it was really her or if it was really somebody else who did it but um re again again he he then came out the closet that he claims he was never in but if you watched him a long time enough, you know that he was gay. It's just sad that he felt like he couldn't reveal it to us, but I get it. I get it. People out here are so hateful and they so mean and they so judged. Oh, God. <laughs> it's, I mean, 
the things they do to straight people on YouTube, you know, so I can imagine what he's been going through all this time, you know, dealing with people coming at him like this over his sexuality or his preference per se. But one thing I like to say before I end this video. Y'all listening? Let me make sure I got this light right because I want y'all to see me clearly. <laughs> One thing I would like to say before I end this video, this vigil, as Brother Jay calls it, this vigil. I love when he says that. This vigil is, I want a friend like Tracy. Did y'all hear that? I don't care what y'all got to say about Treacy, how y'all feel about Treacy, how much y'all hate Treacy, how much y'all drag Treacy. Um, I want a friend like Treacy. And I say this because I have friends that I have known since I was knee high. And I'm not throwing nobody under the bus because I love all my friends dearly. And ain't none of us perfect. None of us perfect. Friends do stuff to each other and they make up, they kiss, and they go and they continue to play. Um, or hang out together. But um, I have friends that I've known for many, many years who I've said, don't say shit. Don't tell nobody. Don't, don't, don't tell mama. Don't tell our other friend. Don't tell such and such. Just don't say nothing. Do you promise that you won't say nothing? Promise me. Pinky swear. <laughs> Pinky swear. And it still gets out. Oh, well, you know, see what had happened was, you know, and then you got to hear them explain how it came out and how they were pressured or how whatever. I want a friend like Tracy. For her to keep that secret of Jay Wilson's. Tracy knew all this time. Like, okay, okay. We we knew too. Most of us, we knew too. We knew that Jay Wilson was gay. We knew. But for her to know without a shadow of a doubt and for her to have receipts. Now, as much as Tracy be on YouTube sometimes three, four times a day giving her reviews on things that's going on in the streets or with celebrities or trending news and all that jazz and other YouTubers. Tracy had plenty of opportunity, plenty of opportunity to throw Jay Wilson under the bus and to be like, hey, y'all. <laughs> you know, her signature opening on her videos. Hey, y'all. Um, she had plenty of opportunity to throw Jay Wilson under the bus and show the picture of him and his boo, you know, the, the picture that he had sent her, you know, a while back of somebody that he was, you know, dealing with or hanging with or whatnot. She had plenty of opportunity. This man has been dragged through the streets, bullied about his sexual activities, his sexual preference, um, people making videos about him, teasing him, clowning him, and he stays strong. He stays strong. And Tracy, she never broke. Like, some people have been trying to turn her against Jay Wilson for a long time. People have been trying to change, turn Jay Wilson against Tracy for a long time. And if you weren't there from the beginning... The way Tracy used to be, and I done said it before, Tracy knows, I done said this on my video, Tracy, she watched my stuff, I watch her stuff, you know, everybody watch each other's stuff on YouTube. So she's heard me say before, I even told her before, I told people how you used to be. <laughs> I told people how you used to be for those newbies who just recently come on YouTube and think they know everything about every situation that's came across YouTube and they don't know nothing. Um, Tracy used to be really hardcore. Tracy, <laughs> a lot of people, you think people don't like Tracy now? Um, a lot of people that follow Tracy now or that are subscribed to Tracy now were the same people 
who was dragging her or talking trash about her or threatening her a while back when she used to go hard in everybody's platforms. And don't say nothing about Jay Wilson. Oh, she would rip you a new you-know-what on whoever platform she was on and didn't care who the YouTuber was, you know, the owner of that platform was. She didn't. But after a while... You know, Jay Wilson was like, Tracy, you got so much to say. A lot of people want to hear what you got to say. You'd be surprised. You know, why don't you get your own YouTube platform? And for a while, she kept, no, 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 no. I don't want my own platform, you know, blah, 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 blah. And we kept pushing her. Tracy, get your own platform. Tracy, get your own platform. Because you have a lot to say. And... Lo and behold, she gets her own platform and just start gaining subscribers just like that, left and right. She's really building her channel, and some people still don't feel for Tracy. Um, I get it. I do get it. I mean, but, you know, when things happen and you put stuff out on YouTube and it's subject to anyone to discuss it and to talk about it, so, I mean... It, literally, if you get mad at Tracy for going over some gossip or something that didn't happen in the YouTube streets, uh, you would have to hate a lot of people because who ain't on YouTube talking about what somebody said on their channel? You know, so, anywho, anywho. Again, Tracy, that is like a real true definition of a friend, a true friend, a trustworthy friend. Um, so I give, I give it to you and I, I, I now can see, um, like a lot of people know they had a really close relationship. They really, um, are friends, her and Jay Wilson, they really are friends. And now you can see why they go so hard for each other because they really are friends. I can't ever see her and Jay really, really falling out, like really falling out. I mean, they they didn't have their differences. They didn't agree to disagree on certain issues, but they are true friends. And I, I give you props, Tracy, because a lot of people, a lot of people, not me, because I know how to keep secrets, and can't nobody that I didn't hung around with or been friends with or relatives with say, Ty told Tanya something and she went back and told, nope, 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 that won't happen. It's done been done to me before, but no, I, I know how it feels to want to confide in someone and not to have too many people to confide in and then for that person to go behind your back and leak the information that you trusted them with. So that is a really big thing in friendships. So kudos to Tracy. Some people is like, you know what? She don't deserve no <laughs> cookie for nothing like that. But true friends are hard to find, especially in these YouTube streets. Especially in these YouTube streets. True fan, true friends are hard to find. But anyway, y'all, um, I'm about to get off this live. I just said what I need to say about both subjects. Um, as soon as I get some more information on Jesse Smollett, I will come back and give my update commentary on the issues, especially especially if and when we find out what his end game was or why he really created this hoax. If the Nigerians are not lying, if they're not lying, you know, um, and he really did plan this whole hoax, I will come back and do commentary on it. You know your girl is. Miss Tanya's Primetime TV Media Reviews will be in the house going live. <laughs> but anyway, y'all, in the meantime and in between time, Primetime Squad... As usual, stay safe, be blessed, and I'm out. Deuces.